Good morning, everyone. Um, today, we have some very exciting things to do. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the 12 senses and then about the different aspects and how they're connected. Now, in all our work, there's a lot of ways to look at the senses. And um, this is very, very important because um, to see how they're connected, you know, in early childhood right the way through to adulthood. And in our young children, especially today, there's so many things that impact the foundation senses, that lay the foundation and are the building blocks that everything else develops afterwards. And often some of the things that we work with with older children and even adults with addiction and all kinds of different things, uh, social situations as well, yeah, go back to disturbances, as I would say, in these foundation senses. So working with early childhood, and most of you have young children, it's very good to know this because then you can work with these and play with them in a way that is very healthy for your children and, and gives them a good foundation for what's going to come next. Um, because there's so much of our lives that we can't predict. So the things we can do and be present with, with the young children, it's so important, okay? In fact, I think sometimes it's the most important part of our lives is our early childhood time, yeah? We know that in kinder, in early childhood programs, whatever they did on the weekend, as I said last night, it gets played out in the, um, in the classroom because that's how children process, bless you. That's how children process. They can't intellectually understand, so they play it out in their movement through their will. Yeah. So the senses are how we start to first, in these foundation senses, uh, how we are able to experience ourself in ourself. This is where we start. We're geo, a young child is geocentric, yeah? not heliocentric not going around the sun, but everything goes around them. We want to make sure that the senses are healthy. The actual organs of sense are healthy. Now, one of the largest sense organs we have, the biggest, is our skin. We breathe through our skin. And we're going to do elements today to do with the first one I'm going to tell you about, and that's touch, tactile sense. This is enormous. And when we really start to activate this in the child is through the labor, right? If that isn't touch, I don't know what is, OK? So touch. Touch is a sense that tells us one main thing. It tells you that you are in a body. And you know when a child is a little bit kind of, you know, whipped up because of whatever, something they ate or the environment, and you call their name, you can call them 500 times. It, they are not going to respond. But as soon as you touch them, what happens? They look right at you, right? Usually. And they come into themselves because what touch does, pure touch, you can touch just one finger, one finger, tells you you are in a, a physical body and something else is there. That's all it tells you. We bring other senses to it, like our sense of warmth, and if we move our finger, we can feel texture. But touch by itself only tells us we are in a physical body. How we touch children is very important, and how we develop this sense is very, very important. This gives you a sense of safety, a sense of being in yourself, and confidence, and so on. And when we add the other senses as we go along, this is the most important, because if you don't have a good sense of touch, healthy, integrated, right, then what happens? You don't know where you end and the world begins. So you're always on high alert that something might touch you, yeah? Especially in the back. If you have a sense 
a very, you know, you're a bit sensitive that way too. Your relationship to space is very different as well. And how we touch each other, we're going to do some exercises later about touch, things that we can do with young children, but also to be aware of how subtle and how deep and intimate. These are very intimate senses, yeah? And how we touch little children. And when you're frustrated and you take the hand of the child, that frustration should never go into the touch that, and that's hard to do, right? That you don't grab and pull, but you take their hand and you may be frustrated, but to let that flow off into the child would be really not, it doesn't serve the child and it doesn't serve you, okay? That's when you feel really bad afterwards. Okay, sense of touch. The next one that's very important and everything affects this is the sense of life. This is the sense of your own well-being. Now, there are a lot of adults too, and children in the grades, that the sense of life needs to be enriched and helped and really uh, made healthy and integrated. And the sense of life goes into nourishment and sleep and nurturing. Because even how you're nurtured, helps this sense of life be healthy. I worked with a 12-year-old in public school who failed to thrive. She wasn't held when she was little. This was off. She wasn't cared for and nurtured and fed properly, right? Mm -hmm. And if you have food issues when you're little, you'll have addic certain addictions when you get older, right? If this isn't healthy, certain addictions will ha grow, come out, can come out later. Not always, but the tendency is there, right? Because there's a deep desire and longing and need, actually, primal need for these elements that we're talking about to be addressed. So, sense of life. Now, sense of life in a lot of our children today is, is off kilter. Not only because our fast-paced life, right? But also because the world we're in now, it used to be maybe there's only one or two things we had to deal with for our sense of life. But now, you know, we're dealing with all kinds of pollution, all kinds of issues. And how many more children today have food sensitivities, environmental sensitivities, air, all kinds of things, allergies and so on. And this throws off the sense of life. So sometimes, we see things show up in behavior that when we see behavior that just doesn't fit anything around in the environment that we can see, you know, there's nothing traumatic going on or whatever, then we go back and look at other, other areas that affect the more, the life sense, which is also the constitution of the child, okay? okay. So the next one is um, movement. Now, this is a sense of self-movement. How do I feel in my body when I'm moving? And the one that goes with this is balance. Okay, these two are very deeply connected because if the balance is not well integrated and strong, right, your sense of being in yourself, and this is the art of coming to stillness. This is self-movement. If your balance is off, then you're not going to feel safe in your movement, yeah? And it will show up in the movement. So it may be that it's chaotic, the child injures themselves a lot and breaks a lot of things around them because they don't have a sense of being centered in themselves, yeah?